Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. And today we're going to look at Magazine Land USA. Yes, I see Joe Kubert's name on the on the gimmick right away. This is uh, so 1977 is when this comes out, and it is actually I don't know where it's listed, but it's Joe Kubert's School, yes. produced by Joe Kubert School of Cartoon Art. So 1977, this must have been first class, I'm guessing. Absolutely. And uh, Bissett, Rick Veach, all those guys, they tell the tales, man, about <laughs> having to fucking do the paste-ups and, you know, draw elaborate tigers at, you know, three inch by three inch squares and stuff. We're going to see some of that inside here, but I wanted to show off the cover before we dive in. So World Color Press printed comic books in, in the 20th century. They were the comic book printer and they had they had giant presses all over the place um even to the point as now comics at one point i believe sued them over mon monopoly practices or something uh, which i don't totally understand how that would work as a printer versus a comics publisher but nevertheless it's the illustrated at one point they were doing like 90 percent of the comics that were printed in america were printed by world color press that includes marvel dc um, you know, Archie, what, what you're seeing here. And what's so unusual is to see all those characters together here. Archie, Casper, Superman, Spider-Man. I was going to say, just like, it's it's anomalous to see, like, Joe Kubert drawing, like, a Spider-Man. This is kind of a hard book to get hold of. And I think part of it is because when the publisher saw this, they're like, no, what are you doing? And and also, it was made for people in the industry. They were trying to drum up work as, as printers. Off the bat, that's that high Eisman lettering, man, that he he taught at the Kubert School even when I was there in 2000. And it's a letter from the uh, president of World Color Press basically saying what this is, which is, you know, they are a, a magazine printer, and this is going to walk through how this stuff is done. So it's kind of cool. It's like a little bit of a how-to book. Um, it would have been – I would have loved this as a kid. Well, look at this, man, foreshadowing because it's, uh, it's a Swamp Thing panel, and Steve Bissett was in class at, at this time too, man. Very interesting. This is the uh, this spread takes you through the production of the comics, and uh, it's like grips. Uh, you know, a decade later, we see Clark Kent sitting at the at the drawing board, slinging ink. But it is the whole process, script and roughs, and you even see the lettering going in over the pencils. It's kind of neat to see the pencils in the finished ink. He uses the bees. <laughs> This drawing is so wonky. This is, I guess, their latest uh, printing facility, factory, and uh, 500,000 square feet of space in this factory. That's ludicrous, man. 500,000 square feet. I, I can't even imagine that. So many football fields. But the perspective isn't right. No. It's, it's, very, uh, it's very confusing to look at that and try to understand it. But we continued through the process of getting stuff ready for mechanical reproduction and lending a hand with that task is Spider-Man. But checking negatives with, with a loop on a light table. There were there were just hints of this whenever I started doing design ed. They they were still around. I still my light table came from one of my early jobs where they were getting rid of it. And it's still the light table that I use. These are your plates that are gonna be used for um the ink. Whenever they're run through the presses. CMYK. And Batman and Robin are making sure that that stuff's all on point. With their smocks. <laughs> <laughs> and the giant web presses. Uh, see, this is the shit that the kids would have to be tasked with. Like, Joe Kubert gets to draw the fun shit, but then you have to, like, bust out your rapidographs and rulers and roll out those boring lines. And this is just history of World Color Press. They were around for about 100 years. I think they were founded in the very early 1900s. And then by the end of the 1990s, Quebecor bought them. Okay. And so, like, they've been absorbed, and I think something called Quad now owns, you know, what's left of them. But this is showing off, basically, the, the nuts and bolts of that operation. And this is paper. Yes. Gigantic reams of paper that would weigh tons. Literally, if one of those things fell on you, you would just, that was, that'd be the end of it. Wonder Woman making her cameo, checking that paper, loading up the presses. This is probably another one of those, Ed, that the uh, students were tasked with drawing the giant press. Not the most fun thing. Not quite a Kirby tech, but almost. It would have been cool if it was more of the Kirby tech, like that was making a, a guest appearance. Interesting color sets, too, on, uh, you know, there's like um, fading colors and shit like that. So the kids are definitely putting their education to use putting this comic together. 
Yeah, this is even like the bindery stuff, you know, like going through the binding process, being stapled and folded, uh, trimmed at one point. I think this is the uh, the trimming and the and the uh, getting them bundled up for distribution. And man, imagine what this is like in real life. Yeah, having to distill that down in, into some simple ink line, or even just working there every day for thirty years, man, collating covers and stuff. I, I get a little bit of the anxiety going through this when I think of like making mini comics or something and seeing like what's it look like if you're making six hundred thousand of uh, <laughs> a book every every couple hours probably. And these things would run 24 hours a day. You know, 500,000 square feet doesn't pay for itself with one eight-hour shift. But this would have been, you know, darn near the height of uh, probably their production. I mean, I guess it's the 70s, and actually that may be whenever things are starting to dip, which is probably why they're making this comic, is to drum up business. Well, look at this right here, man. They're using the flexographic uh, plates, the plastic plates, man, and uh, it's warping, which is which is interesting because this is like very early for that to be in use but it's definitely applied right there man because when you see those uniform wobbles and i make note of it because this is something that i would notice in like 80s marvel and just wonder like what the heck happened there and now i know you know they used the plastic plate and that line was too thin yeah and this is like an educational moment for for the students at the Kubert school because they would now know that they better use the thicker rapidograph next time that's interesting. I wonder if they would go through and do that breakdown, like whenever this was published, if that becomes a class session of like, let's go through this page by page. Yeah, yeah. I don't know See about how the stuff reproduces and what works a, and doesn't. As a cartoonist, I mean, this is what we do on our own. Yes. You know, so it would have at least happened at that level. Most of this is laid out in spreads too, which I find kind of different. I don't know how many comics were, were using the spreads there with no gutters you know, in the 70s. You don't see that that often in, like, a Marvel and DC. Even when they do a two-page spread off, then the gutter is still open. Right. And it was just flat-out impossible, like, even into the 90s, even even into the aughts. Like, I would talk with guys, and, and they did, had no control of even knowing where or when the, the ad breaks were going to come right. into their comic. Because, you know, that's something that you could manipulate if you, if you had some fore, foresight. You could do some fun storytelling things, but, you know corporate comics people they don't care when i was looking up stuff about um world press they bought Fawcett uh at one point and Fawcett being the um the companies that would do those paperbacks like the peanuts paperbacks those were Fawcett publications i think in the 70s maybe they they bought them so you know it was a huge business for almost a century and i, I guess that has changed even though they continue to kind of exist and print but uh you know, it was it was a huge industry forever. Like you used to be able to learn printing in high schools and stuff is like a trade. And again, all these characters that I don't think they were supposed to put on one page together. <laughs> it's a pretty neat artifact, though. There's a handful of these these comics that would come out back in the old days, and they would they would give a glimpse of like how to make this stuff, which I was always very interested in. This perspective, I think, works a little better than the one that we saw on the uh, on the inside page, but. It's a bygone era, but uh, I love seeing just the how do you actually make comics. This is kind of the, the process. Yeah, it's a super fun little artifact, man. And I think that the Kubert students, they put together about four of these, four of these different catalogs. They would do a lot of, um, a lot of like the, there was a company, I think, in New Jersey that would sell all the licensed stuff. Yeah. And it, like Heroes, toy, toy it, was, it was Heroes World. Yeah, they did a lot of those. I think they did three or four of those. I have a couple of those. Yeah. And you can see Kubert's, uh, certainly his style kind of going through there. So maybe an early, maybe a first year assignment for uh, some of the students. But pretty interesting object. I don't know how many of these exist. I looked for it for a while before I was able to find a copy. So Do you know how you discovered it? Something online, I'm sure. What yeah. do you say? Should we should we bounce? Yep, that's all I have. K Fabers, like, subscribe, follow the YouTube channel. We're on the road to fifteen thousand. You can subscribe to the K Fabe e newsletter below this video. You can also find T shirts and other K Fabe merch below this video. Let's go work on our own printing techniques, Jim. Give them the marching orders, dude. Make more comics. <laughs>